Asked most Resident Evil fans today what their formative gaming experience was, and most of them will probably answer, Resident Evil 4. Well, apart from that weird guy who reckons that Gun Survivor was the definitive survival horror experience, but whatever. In retrospect, it's easy to see why the game was such a revolution for a series that had become kind of stale and played out, with its greater focus on action and fast-paced over-the-shoulder combat, proper 3D environments to explore, and much larger maps than anything the series had delivered up until that point. It was a title that delivered gripping moment-to-moment -moment gameplay experiences and basically set the template for all future Resident Evil games for the next decades. Then again, it also pretty much abandoned the slower-paced, methodical exploration and problem-solving that had characterised the early titles and started the franchise down a path that would lead to the overblown excesses of Resident Evil 5 and 6. So it's fair to say that as someone who's been with the series since way back in 1996, I've always had kind of mixed feelings about Resident Evil 4. I like being in the thick of it and I respect what it accomplished, but I can't help but have misgivings about the design philosophy that it represents. So I was a little bit unsure what to expect going into the remake a few months back, partly because these Capcom remakes have got kind of a spotty track records. RE2 did a fine job replicating and expanding on the legacy of its predecessor, while Nemesis turned out to be a disappointing short expansion pack masquerading as a full game that abandoned a lot of what made the original good. But having played and completed it a couple of times now, I can confidently say that Resident Evil 4 is a fine remake of the original, faithfully recreating all the things that made the first game so compelling, quietly removing some of the more absurd elements, and even adding in a few improvements of its own. The result is a game that really feels like a lot of thought and effort has been put into it, that delivers plenty of challenges and rewards for people willing to put the time in and one that I had a great deal of fun playing through. All that being said though, there's a few elements of the story and setting that I didn't love back in the day and still don't particularly like now, but I'll get into that one later. Anyway, on with the story. So you play as Leon S. Kennedy, a former rookie cop from Resident Evil 2, who's since put on his big boy pants and become a secret agent guy working directly for the president. Your mission in this case is to infiltrate a remote village in rural Spain and rescue the president's daughter Ashley after she was kidnapped by some weird religious cult operating in the area. Needless to say, things soon go wrong, and in classic Resident Evil style, you find yourself alone and cut off in a remote location, surrounded by enemies who want to do very unpleasant things to you. Your goal is to fight your way through a variety of locations, rescue Ashley and get the hell out of there. Along the way, you'll tangle with infected locals, mutated monsters, cult leaders, weird insane aristocrats and former comrades working for the enemy, and unmask a world-threatening global conspiracy dating back decades. So far, so Resident Evil. As I said earlier, the thing that really set Resident Evil 4 apart from its predecessors was the intense moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, the feeling of being swamped by superior numbers of enemies, of having to make split-second decisions, quick reactions and accurate shots that made every bullet count, having to learn how to use the environment to your advantage, to funnel enemies into choke points and climb up to higher levels to give yourself a temporary reprieve and having to deal with enemies who have actual intelligence instead of mindless zombies and lumbering mutants that just wander straight towards you. It all added up to a feeling of being constantly on the back foot, of having to improvise and adapt to stay in the fight, and it's perfectly replicated right here. The main challenge in the old Resident Evil games was in effectively managing your limited inventory, making sure you had just the right weapons and key items to hand at any given time, without getting weighed down by excess baggage or running out of vital resources when you needed them most. They were games that rewarded people who planned their next moves and thought ahead. Yeah, there was combat, but it was never particularly challenging in terms of skill. You pointed your weapon roughly in the direction of the enemy and let rip until they either died or you ran out of bullets. But here, the emphasis is much more on those quick reactions and snap decisions that make all the difference between success or death. Blunder in guns blazing and you'll quickly exhaust your supplies, but think tactically and use your surroundings to even the odds, and the chances are you'll walk away with more resources than you started with. The game very much rewards skilled players who make the most of what they have around them. The difficulty levels pitch pretty well, I think. The game knows just when to throw in new enemies or difficult situations to keep you on your toes, and the boss battles offer up some pretty challenging fights at times. That being said, the later island section gets a little excessive with all its gun turrets and searchlights and fortified bunkers. Jesus, it feels more like Call of Duty than a Resident Evil game at times. On the plus side, they've more or less done away with the obnoxious quick time events this time 
time around, which were so annoyingly intrusive in the original that they actually started to sour the experience. And I could be wrong, but I suspect the game's got a bit of dynamic difficulty working behind the scenes, because whenever I was low on ammo or health, I'd usually find a convenient pickup around the next corner. There's a wide selection of weapons and equipment to help you along the way, most of which can be upgraded with in-game currency by visiting the merchant, another little throwback to the original game. As with most games like this, you'll never have enough resources to buy and upgrade everything, so your best bet is to pick a couple of weapons that best suit your style of play and put everything you've got into them. Environments are large and complex enough to offer plenty of rewards for exploration, and there's some genuinely impressive scenery once you get to the castle section. Textures and objects are nicely detailed, character models look great, and the dynamic light and shadow behaves pretty much as it should. There was no real glitching or slowdown that I can recall, and just like the original game, the colour palette ranges from brown to grey to brownish grey, but hey, I guess that's pretty standard for a horror game like this. Unlike the original though, there's little nods to bigger open world areas where you're turned loose and allowed to just explore at your leisure, taking on little side quests and optional objectives to earn special items and rewards. Again, this is a game that rewards players who put a lot of time into it. It's not the best implementation of the system I've ever seen, and I get the feeling that the devs weren't entirely committed to it, but hey, it's nice if you want to take a break from the main storyline for a while. Characters are generally well-rounded and given just enough backstory and personality to make them interesting, especially Krauser, who was just kind of thrown into the original game without really being introduced or built up. Leon's suitably gruff and stoic, and he seems to have avoided the pussification process that's blighted so many male video game characters these days. Ashley is slightly less abrasive this time around. I mean, yeah, her escort missions are a bit of a drag, especially when her pathfinding spazzies out and she just kind of freezes on the spot, waiting for a Ganado to pick her up and carry her off. But at least that annoying scream's been toned down a bit now. <laughs> and Louise is just as flamboyant and charismatic as ever. Although fuck me, I've got no idea what Ada's voice actress was going for. Her delivery sounds like they plucked a random drunk girl off the street at 3am, sat her in front of a teleprompter and forced her to read the lines without giving her any context or direction. You don't seem surprised. Interesting. She sounds flat and detached and spaced out and it totally took me out of what should have been an awesome scene. Now, I'd be lying if I said I was a huge fan of antagonists like Sadler or Salazar from the original game and I can't say the remake does much to change that. Salazar always came across as so ludicrous in his 18th century clothes that it was like he'd stumbled in from a completely different game and Sadler always felt like a nothing burger of a character, just a generic cult leader guy who doesn't show up until the last couple of hours and has got no real personality or agenda. And well, it's basically the same story this time around. Which brings me to one other criticism that's kind of a holdover from the original game, so don't hold it against this one too much. But for me, the Resident Evil series was very much an American-centric story, Raccoon City being a stereotypical Midwestern city. Yeah, it was filtered through the slightly weird and distorted lens of how Japanese people view America, but it was still very much recognisable. The novelty of those games lay in seeing the normal turned abnormal, seeing zombies and monsters lurching through city streets, past cafes and shops, through homes and businesses. And the enemies of those stories were enemies that were also grounded in reality. Faceless corporations with sinister agendas, deadly spies willing to do anything to complete their mission, undercover operatives playing both sides. It was a story based around corporate greed, science gone wrong, and the human thirst for power. So the switch to towering gothic castles, aristocratic European families, religious death cults, and ancient parasites just always felt weird and out of step with what the series was supposed to be. Not that I'm saying the franchise had to stay hardwired into one particular style and setting forever, but narratively and tonally, I just don't think this is what people really look for in a Resident Evil game. Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy, how then again, maybe I'm just an old man pining for a bygone era. Either way, I consider Resident Evil 4 to be an excellent and faithful remake of the original that improves on a lot of elements while retaining the core gameplay that made it so enjoyable the first time around. It's probably not going to win over anyone who wasn't a fan of the action-centric style of the original, but for anyone with fond memories of RE4 looking to take it on another spin, it'll definitely keep you happy. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.